Mr. Turner is a biopic that takes place in the mid-19th century, during the last part of the great painter's life. This is not an academic documentary, but a fresco about a man's life who was a lonely, complex and often rough, as well as the ups and downs of the artist's creative process. The aesthetic aspect and admirable staging make this film worth seeing. Directed by Julie Tamer in 2002, Salma Hayek plays out Frida convincingly and with a lot of sensuality. The film faithfully follows the life of the Mexican painter as it celebrates art as a transcendental power. Frida is an extraordinary affirmation of life, of creative energy. She is a free, iconic character who doesn't choose art against life. Sometimes frankly conventional, sometimes truly gripping, this film celebrates an artist who built her life like a masterpiece. For its first feature film, Ed Harris really did not choose the easy way. Focusing on an American genius who revolutionized painting thanks to dripping, Pollock, produced, directed and masterfully performed by Ed Harris, releases a biopic about this charismatic and tortured artist who doesn't live indifferent. Whether one is interested or not in art, this film is a success, one of the best accepted by critics who have underlined the many documentation work done prior to writing. In Surviving Picasso, the filmmaker James Ivory traces only a ten years period of the great artist during his love affair with Françoise Guillo. The film offers a contrasting portrait of the painter, both brilliant and tyrannical. For the purposes of the scenario, some events were romanticized but all in all, it's based on a careful investigation that reveals a selfish monster behind a genius and the difficulty to share the life of an artist, hence the title. If Anthony Hopkins is pretty convincing in the role, the Hispanic side of the character is missing. 1998 film directed by John Maybury, Love is the Devil, tells the tragic relationship of one of the most controversial painters of the 20th century, Francis Bacon, with George Dyer, a little gangster and a catalyst for the artist. Imaginary journey where the desires and the suffering of two human beings coexist up to destruction. Though this film is a rather clumsy attempt to evoke the painter's source of inspiration, one will remember the couple formed by Derek Jacobi and Daniel Craig. Inspired by the autobiography of Irish writer and painter Christy Brown, paralyzed almost completely since his birth, my left foot is a great life lesson with the awesome and wonderful actor Daniel D. Lewis. Far from being a depressing or weepy movie about disability, Jim Sheridan offers us a Christy Brown who refuses to be pitied, a frustrated and often fussy man like anybody can be. Film to be seen, really, if only for D. Day Lewis performing. This production by Robert Altman, Vincent and Theo tells a decade of the Dutch painter's life and his brother Theodore, an art dealer who tries to sell Vincent canvases without great results. If Tim Roth, in the role of Vincent, is quite good in his schizophrenic intensity. The film is without a great interest. Artemisia, this singular female personality, deserves better than a simple biotic stuck in a complicated sentimental relationship. This 1997 film directed by Agnes Merle, based on the end of life of Artemisia Gentileschi, takes place in the Rome of 1610th, with a very linear plot and a scenario quite far from historical truth. The ending, more dramatic, fortunately gives more strength to the film. Among the films dedicated to artists and to their work, this one remains the most successful according to public and critics, arriving at the nomination for three awards Oscar. Adapted from Tracy Chevalier's bestseller, the film tells the disturbing relationship of the painter Vermeer and his young servant Griette, 
will serve as a model for its famous painting. This film is not a biopic, but rather a look at the process of creating the famous painting. It is mostly an aesthetic film, and the actors Scarlett Johansson and Colin Firth are quite good. Basket It definitely a biographical film, but it is also a tribute to the first black tormented artist who really succeeded in the powerful and cruel world of the arts, and disappeared in 1988 at the age of 27 years old. His tragic end is inevitably felt, but still, it is an interesting biopic with an exceptional cast where Jeffrey Wright offers a perfect composition with a lunar aura reflecting the genius of Basket.